Super Mario Brothers. No way. <laughs> that wow. joint look dope. Wow. <laughs> that joint look dope. I think it's going to be hilarious, Brian. I think this movie is going to be hilarious. Oh, I can't wait for this movie. Wow. This is like, are you kidding me, Super Mario Brothers? This is a game that we grew up with, Brian. And to, and to see it this way, told in a, in a visually uh, pleasing way, reminiscent of what we used to play or what we could think of in terms of animation, I think the, the, the nostalgia is going to hit. The wow. jokes are going to hit. All that stuff is going to be amazing. I think this movie is going to do gangbusters at the box office. Adults are gonna take their kids. Even if the kids don't know that where we're going, we're gonna go see Super Mario Brothers. Every, the, they're bringing and then the kids, kids gonna want to play the game after. Mo money, mo money, mo money. Damn, I'm good. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz, and joining us as well is Mr. Freddie Maloney for this latest series of the Nerd Gem Report. Let's get it out the way. Quite some time ago, Brian. Freddie, we need to clear out so Pablo can take some bows here. <laughs> Let me walk away. Regarding Super Mario Brothers, that the possibility of this movie making some bank is pretty high. Not because it's going to be a great movie, but because the trailers seem to hint at some of the things we have... Uh, experienced before while playing the game. They really were going for that nostalgic feeling and playing all the hits, all the hidden little gems of Super Mario Brothers, the things that make it Super Mario Brothers. A lot of those people are still alive today. Um, and, and, and Super Mario Brothers is still a, a, a well-loved game and it's still played. And I think that they were just hitting on those notes. Regardless, I went to see it. I don't know what the story was. I was just enjoying what I was seeing. I have some memory of it, but I was just looking for the hits, looking for the little things. And they did some really good things, Brian. Um, you haven't seen it. Freddie, you haven't seen it. But the money that I did not expect, it would make this much opening week. And Brian, what are the projected numbers for Super Mario Brothers? Wow. So this is quite simply the greatest animated movie open of all time, straight out. Um, broke the record of Frozen 2. Wow. Uh, which was, I mean, you up there with Elsa. Anna and Elsa, That's you doing crazy. something. So, 205 domestic. It's going to approach 400 million global opening weekend. This thing is going to easily smash a billion dollars wow. as a non-sequel animated property. I mean, there's no words to say it other than that. You've got also the calendar is clear, right? So we, 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 just, kept, we just went through a really busy stretch of movies, which by and large were actually pretty successful with the notable exception of Shazam. And we'll come back to that. But, you know, you had, as we talked about, you had Creed 3, you had Scream 6, you had John Wick 4, and then you had this thing kind of sitting behind it. And now you have this gap until Guardians of the Galaxy 3 uh, coming in a couple of weeks. This movie is going to stay in the consciousness. And I, you know, this was not, we did our most anticipated to your credit and 100% your credit. You had this uh, high on your list. I did not. I was more dismissive of it. I didn't think there's any way this thing would do 500, let alone a billion. And I'm going to go see it now. And I'm going to take my kid to go see it now because it is, the a good time. is real. Audiences are loving what they're seeing. And I'm loving what I'm hearing, which is like you. I've played many of the games. And the critics who didn't like it clearly don't get the object of a movie like this, which is to evoke the memories and the fun of playing those console games. It's not to make an Oscar-worthy film. They, they, they count counting them dollars. They ain't counting Oscars. They count yeah. Benjamins. More money, more money, more money. <laughs> they really um, hit on those notes uh, in understanding the progression of those characters and into this world. And, and visually, Brian, character performance voice acting i think they hit on all those notes and they did a fantastic job and quite frankly i can see another one of these and i think that's what they're setting up for i'm sure they are absolutely absolutely going to what brian said about the critics are not really feeling it or some of the critics are not feeling it those are the ones that never played the game <laughs> probably 
they probably Bears never played the game. <laughs> right, so who cares, you know? But from what I heard, and I didn't see the movie, I'll probably go now because, you know, the way how Pablo hyped that. Hey, listen, just, yes, and that's exactly why I will watch it. And again, you're saying that it made a lot of money with 200 plus, 300 going to 400 million globally. So this, this, as usual, when you get to a billion dollars, you need to, you need to reach into a lot of demographics to make that work. And I saw the breakdown, I saw the breakdown of this and it was, it's across racial lines. Uh, it's definitely, you know, it's, it's across age. I was surprised, like, yes, there was a little skew toward the over 25 versus the under 25 age bracket, but not as big as you would have thought. There was a skew toward male versus female, but not as big as you would have thought. This movie got everyone to go. And it, it, maybe it's a function of like, we haven't had a great kids fit, like franchise type film in a while, like after Super Pets tried and failed, quite honestly, but like families were ready to, to come out to see this. And so I was really impressed by the breadth of, of this. And you're right, like, I, I haven't seen it, but like the stuff I heard about like nods to like, if you played the game, like power ups and like little things in the kingdom that like you would, you would write, like if a critic doesn't get that, then it has no value to them. But if a if a gamer or even a casual one sees it, they're gonna get a chuckle out of out of seeing something that they played or experienced on you know on, on any of the on any of the boards. So yeah, no, I think it's I think what it does though, and I want this is why I, I suggested this as a topic, is yeah. I think there's something bigger going on here. And this is just the culmination of one of the more dramatic turnarounds in Hollywood, which is the adaptation of a video game into a TV show or film used to be an absolute graveyard. Yeah. And it's ironic because the original live action Mario Brothers movie is a great example of that. That was in the period where we got Mario Brothers, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, those uh, Double Dragon. We got those live action adaptations all within like a three and four year period. And they were horrible, <laughs> horrible. And then it became like every game they would try to adapt would fail. Remember, there was that Final Fantasy movie they tried to do like about 15 years ago, Spirits Within. Like they tried yeah. to do some fancy CGI. That failed like over and over again. You had some low level success with Resident Evil. That was the one franchise that kind of made money at least. Yeah. But everything else was a guaranteed loss yeah. at the box office. In the last two to three years, I just want to point out, Sonic the Hedgehog, yep. The Witcher, Uncharted, which made $400 million of, of global box office. More recently, The Last of Us on HBO. That was a huge yeah. event series. And now you get a billion dollar record breaking adaptation of a classic character. Guys, I, it looks to me like the video, at, video game adaptation revolution is finally taking hold. And... <laughs> You know, you're talking about, forget sequel. This is the Nintendo Cinematic Universe. That's yes. what's coming. Yes. If you don't think that's coming off this movie, mm. you, you, I, I don't know what you're expecting because that's what's going to happen. And I'm just fascinated to see how much they can push this genre and create real competition with the one we usually talk about. Because the audience for these movies is exactly the same one that goes to see Marvel and DC. Yep. So why... Why is it? Why is it that the movies today, animation that's based off of the video games, are so working so much today now, and not so much was did yesteryear? I mean, I mean, could you lay that on the quality of of, of how it's presented? Yeah, Bad script is that you know all, all of those, all of the above is just hey, they weren't ready. Uh, live action was just too much of a drastic uh format from game to live action where visually they couldn't really make mm. it believable i mean look at street fighter for god's sake with john claude van damme it was it was just that was that was a great movie man. Yeah. okay <laughs> i mean we have some some uh god of war i believe they're working on that which i'm excited to see because because that's interesting to me um and, and again that uh uh what's it called um assassin's creed that's that was something that you and i brian had mentioned like this would be dope assassin's creed because the movie as is a just, tv series exactly but they, as an r-rated tv series oh as a, oh, as a tv series oh Netflix okay is yeah, doing yeah. It. That, that that made more sense that, than, the, yeah. than the michael fassbender movie, the, the yeah. movie right I agree. I agree. I agree. So I agree. This genre has just given us 
off the rip a billion and buzz and now more appetite for more who knows Whoa. if from this we get um more games uh more titles this i mean although these weren't games but that next set of of original uh, programming to films let's who knows now let's see if we get voltron or he-man or or, or let's get let's get dragons <laughs> Well, I want to get back to that because I want you guys. I actually want to hear you guys. What it, like? What is the wish list? Well, because I have a few that I want would love to see try. But I think to Freddie's point, I thought about this too. Why? Why is it suddenly working when it didn't work for twenty years? And I think that the one thing that struck me about the approach to Super Mario Brothers that they got really right was they just chose to they just chose to have Illumination make it animated and make it look like the game. The fact that it isn't live action is probably a stroke of genius yes like are we have like if, if it's actually chris pratt in a costume and anya taylor joy and it jack black work. Is, it, is this a hit i don't think so I, I think this works because it looks like the game you played and so that made me think wow that was sitting there the whole time and they didn't think of it but there's probably a family of games that just lend themselves to animation like don't even bother with live action. Just keep it within Pixar, within Illumination, within the studio, within the animation studios, and just have them build, you know, a walking, talking version of the game world. But at the other end of the spectrum, I think what started to happen that's working with The Last of Us and The Witcher, most notably, is this very adult, gritty, realistic adaptation of video games that are themselves very adult. And that seems to be working. Prestige TV, big budgets. They look expensive. They have big cast. They're well-written. They're not treated like video games. They are treated as awards fair. That is also working at the other end of the spectrum. We didn't mm. have that 20 years ago. And one fantastic example of a game being transformed into a series on TV that was, I think, one of the best cartoons in quite some time, Castlevania, Brian. Freddy, oh, you're right. You saw, I don't know. I don't know if you're you saw right. Castlevania. I watched some of that on your recommendation. No, I no. You're missing out. That's, that's adult animation, basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but they're, so, yeah. but they're taking yeah. that those properties and giving it is is authenticity on a different format that still keeps us connected to that experience when we first played these games. So. That also got me thinking, well, what failed about all? And then, by the way, it was interesting to me. I texted Pablo this. The, the rights to Street Fighter, the, the cinematic rights, were immediately purchased by Legendary Studios as Super Mario Bros. was coming out, which means we are going to see a real attempt at a real Street Fighter something. We'll see if it's TV. We'll see if it's a movie. I cannot um, wait. But I think the thing that made what I was thinking about was I just talked about the two extremes, like the family-friendly animation and sort of like prestige TV adult. I think the issue is a lot of these tried to live in the middle, right? They tried to be like, we saw Mortal Kombat come out and it was like PG rated. You immediately know there's a problem, right? Because the game itself is not PG rated. And it got me thinking like, you know what other genres kind of sitting in the middle and having problems, especially, you know, on TV is superheroes, right? Like we're kind of, like we're asking this question about Daredevil. We're asking this question about Blade. It's like, we're, you know, we're asking these questions about as we get ready for X-Men, like, how adult versus how family friendly do these need to be? And like, I don't know, like video games are maybe showing the way that like you can push more in either extreme than than maybe Marvel or especially Marvel has really been willing to do in the last couple of years. So I think it's a real threat. I mean, I think for the superhero genre, they're already, you know, there's already blood in the water and the studios would love an alternative to comic book movies. And they just got handed one. They just got handed one by this film. <laughs> Yeah. I think 20 years, I think 20 years ago, I think the mindset was different, you know, in the sense of they didn't want to present that type of like gritty, you know, for some like kind of like, you know, really dark, like uh, video games. And they didn't want to put it on that big screen because they probably thought maybe at that time, 20 years ago, you know, it wasn't going to work or it was just too much to present, you know, for people to see on the big screen, perhaps maybe. I think you know, afraid. I think they were afraid audiences would not come. I think there was a Mortal Kombat movie. I think also, 
is that back then these properties were looked at as just um they weren't given the proper treatment is what i would say and it was more you know i look they took a chance on super mario brothers and they gave these guys an opportunity to make it their way the way they thought it would be dope i mean this could have failed mm -hmm. and, 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 but it did not at whatsoever it's come on you know what i'm saying tell man? john tell, tell john that was on that tell him i don't know what's up with that so. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day he's, he's, nothing about he's, that stuff. so but it's, it's, he it's, is it's salty very, with that. It is a very exciting <laughs> opportunity, Brian, because it, it we can see other things other than superhero stuff, which is fine with me. Um, mm. But my hope is with the superhero genre is that they take um, notice of what Super Mario Brothers was able to pull off um, with this. And somehow, and it's that authenticity is like, are these characters who they are and not changing into someone else that we do not recognize? Yeah. That's it. So very interesting. Very interesting. Let us know in the so comment me, section. All right, let me, I want to oh, ask oh, you guys. Okay. 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 So what, what, what's on your wish list? So if okay. you're going to get a video game that has not been adapted, that you love or love playing, what do you want to see attempted? I know that they're working on, um, this wouldn't count because I know it's coming. It's on Netflix. Um, Splinter Cell. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that right now. My wish list, though, I mean, Lionsgate purchasing Street Fighter and it to be done, though, you know, like there were some animations that were pretty dope, but live action, that just didn't, that just did not work. So. I don't know if I, I I don't care if we do live action or animation. I prefer animation, Brian, because I it, it just keeps me in that world of playing the game. Uh, and you can pull well, off Street the Fighter, stunts better. There's more effects to the sort of special moves and finishing moves than even in Mortal Kombat, as I recall. Like the hundred handed punch, like yeah. some of the fire, like lightning effect. So maybe it does work better as an ant. That's the other thing is like as these. This conversation is happening right now across the studio. What can we what can we buy rights to? What can we get our hands on in the video game library? And then it comes down to like, what do we want to make it as? Is it TV? Is it film? Is it animated? Is it live action? So yeah, I'm just kind of curious what's on. The, the one I thought of was like, well, it's like one of two games, but just the family of games was either, I was thinking, could they do something fun with either like Shinobi or Ninja Gaiden? Because I feel like the genre could use a really fun you know, sort of ninja style movie or but, show. But would it be live action or what do you? What, what, I don't know. I, I would lean live action for that because it's not as neither one of those games is effects as effects driven. What I'm curious about is almost I almost lean in TV over film because I almost feel like you could serialize like the backstory of the character and the quest and that sort of thing. But that that was just from that that 80s era where I was sort of thinking ah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing one of those like in a martial arts, you know, epic type. The thing about Shinobi and Ninja Gaiden, it just reminds me, I would look toward the thing that pops into my memory in terms of films that I've seen that are sort of similar is, uh, what, what was that movie? Assassins? Ninja Assassin. That's Ninja the, Assassin, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So the Wachowskis I, I, backed, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Like, uh, how different would it be from that? Because that wasn't that um, uh, successful, although I thought it was visually dope. Yeah. Um, that the like, other, the other like was, that would have worked anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> the other <laughs> random one was do you think they could adapt Punch Out? <laughs> I mean, boxing is a genre that has worked right many times on screen. I'm just, I just don't see how that really works. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch Contra. Contra, that's not a bad one, yeah. And that's not a bad, yeah. That's just, yeah. And and Akari, what was it? A, a, it was it was a, there was a bunch of uh ones that i used to play back in the day um but double dragon there's a bunch i mean a double dragon that also attempted it uh, uh and it didn't work oh, it was, a live it was the same era though yeah, exactly yeah. The same era. it was the same type of movie they treated them they treated them like jokes you know it was kind of like the, the the action was silly the costumes were silly and like i think that that ultimately backfired so you're clearly not going to see that now yeah I mean, I, you and I didn't really love the Mortal Kombat adaptation just because the story was wrong. But, like, they at least were moving in the direction of, like, we're not afraid to make it adult. We're not afraid to put, you know, some fatalities in. They just, I don't know why they didn't put a tournament in a game that's built on a tournament. But, yeah. But 
as I said, that was a streaming hit. That like whatever we think about it, people more people tuned in for that than tuned in for Zack Snyder's Justice League. If you're just going by the strict numbers, every movie they turn into more than Justice League. <laughs> Let us know in the comment section below. Are you guys excited for the possibilities of future video game adaptations in movies and animation? Just brought to life in a more authentic and genuine way that brings back the nostalgic feeling of when we played it and and plays the hits. Because that's what Super Mario did. It played some of the hits. And it just has a... There is... These guys are jumping for joy right now. So there's so much more they can do and they will do. Um, and uh, it's very exciting. Very exciting. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.